everyone, so today I am going to be doing a video that I have wanted to do for quite a while now, but also I felt like I didn't really have enough to talk about to be able to film it. My mouse is running around in his little ball. Don't hit me, please. And that is Peter Pan. Yeah, okay, y'all know I'm on a Peter Pan kick. I have been obsessed with Peter Pan since like February-ish, so like not that long. I know people who have been obsessed with him for like their entire lives, but I only recently got into the story. I have never, I had never seen the Peter Pan movies. I'd never read the book. I'd never really cared. Peter Pan was one of those stories that totally went over my head. Like, I, I don't really like fairy tales that much and I don't really care that much about Disney, mostly because I don't watch movies in general. Um, dude. And Peter Pan was definitely one that I never paid attention to. Like, if you ask me the name of fairy tale, Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, Ariel, like, The Little Mermaid, like, I would name everything before Peter Pan. Like, it was not something that I ever thought about. Until I happened to read a book that was a Peter Pan retelling on a complete whim, and I freaking loved it and is now one of my all-time favorite books and then I suddenly just I needed more I needed more and I kept reading and I kept reading and I kept just I watched the movies I like I did everything with Peter Pan basically um and now I feel like I finally have enough to talk about so in this video I'm going to be showing you guys the books that I have read thus far the books that I have picked up to read soon as well as just some feelings on Peter Pan in general. So, so far I have read four Peter Pan books. I feel like there's more. Oh, I read four and I tried reading another one, but I got rid of it because I hated it. Um, I will mention that one though, uh, though I don't have anything to hold up. And I'm going to try to go in the order that I read them. So the first book that I read that was the Peter Pan retelling um, was the thing that made me fall in love so much with the story. And that is Peter Darling by Austin Chant. This book is a Peter Pan retelling sequel where Peter has left Neverland and grown up a little bit and then he comes back to Neverland because he is unhappy in his normal life because in this parallel of Peter Pan, um, Peter is not always Peter. When he goes back to the other world rather than Neverland, he is Wendy Darling. Um, so he can only be Peter Pan and be himself when he is in Neverland. I really, really liked this book. I adored it. I loved the characterization of Peter. I really liked the LGBT aspects because there is a male-male romance in this book also. And overall, I just really liked the magic and the fun of this book overall. And basically, after I flipped the last page, I was like, I need more. I need to read more. So I decided to go straight for the original and pick up the actual Peter Pan by J.M. Barrie, and I ended up loving this book. Firstly, if you guys wanted to know, I give this a 5 out of 5 obviously. I also gave this a 5 out of 5. Um, this is now probably my new favorite classic. Besides The Lord of the Flies, I love The Lord of the Flies, but this is probably tied with it. Um, I'm not actually that big of a fan of classics. I kind of had a resolution to read more, and I just, I'm not the biggest fan all the time, um, but this one I really loved. If you want to see, I have so many different, like, little tab notes and stuff, um, that I just, quotes that I like, characterizations that I like, stuff like that, and I love this book so much because I, like, although I'd never seen the Disney movies, I always thought Peter Pan was more like the Disney movies, um, like, kind of innocent and cutesy and, like, Neverland and Never Grow Up and stuff like that, um, but this book is violent. This book is a lot more gruesome than you'd probably think it was gonna be. And I really liked it for that. Probably, it kind of reminds me of Lord of the Flies if I'm completely honest, so I just like those kind of books. The next book I read was the one that I ended up unhauling, and that was Unhooked by Lisa Maxwell. I hated it. I got like 70 pages in, I think. Um, it was stupid. I hated it. I really didn't like it, so I didn't read that one. I DNF'd it. Um, and then the next one that I read was Lost Boy by Christina Henry. This is probably my favorite Peter Pan retelling that I've read so far, um, including Peter Darling. I think I like this one more than Peter Darling because I loved Christina Henry's characterization the most out of all of the Peter Pan retellings I've read so far. I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about his, his characterization later, but this book honestly was Peter Pan mixed with Lord of the Flies. It was amazing. I loved Christina Henry's world that she made in this book based on Neverland and I just loved it. This one is about um, basically Captain Hook's story. Um, it is a parallel where Captain Hook 
was Peter Pan's first friend. He was the first lost boy and his name was Jamie and then this is about how he became Captain Hook. And yeah, I love this book so much. It was so good. And I just got my copy like recently and just look at all of those tabs. Yeah. So again, another five out of five stars. Can we see a pattern so far? And the most recent Peter Pan retelling that I have read recently was Tiger Lily by Jodie Lynn Anderson. This one was a very unique take on Peter Pan and I really enjoyed it. I gave it like a 4 to a 4.5 out of 5 stars or so. I really, really enjoyed it. It's a pretty short book so I flew through it in a day. Um, this book is basically about Peter Pan and the Lost Boys in Neverland if rather than Wendy it was Tiger Lily who Peter became a little bit infatuated with. This book explores a lot more of Tiger Lily's story and the tribe and English people taking over the island and stuff like that, which I really, really liked. This book also had a huge discussion of gender, which I really liked. Um, and But this definitely had my least favorite characterization of Peter, but all of the other characters were amazing. I really, really liked them, especially Tiger Lily and TikTok. They were so great. I love them so much. Um, and this book was definitely really, really good. I also thought it was really unique how it is actually told from Tinkerbell's point of view rather than Peter or Tiger Lily telling the story. It is from a bystander's point of view who's just kind of watching it unravel in front of her. This book is really, really good. I really recommend. I feel like this is definitely a Peter Pan retelling a lot of people go for um and i i really like it i really like it it's good now i'm going to show the books that i have on my tbr to read that are peter pan retellings or peter pan like actual stories because the first one i have is peter pan in kensington garden and peter and wendy by j m barry this is the first and second book of peter pan not peter pan's first appearance because that is in a different book by him but I do plan on reading that also um but this is Peter Pan's first couple of little stories it is wicked short it's like 200 pages I'm I don't really know why it's so short but I definitely plan on reading this very soon to get some more like real canon kind of stories about Peter Pan and then I also have Never Never by Brianna are shrum. I'm a little nervous about this. I, I don't know whether it's because it looks like Unhooked, because Unhooked looks just like this, um, or if it's because it's a YA retelling. Um, but I'm gonna give it a chance, obviously. If not, I just will unhaul it, but um, this is a YA retelling of Peter Pan. Actually, wait a second. This is not what I thought it was. Oh my god. I just... I just read the back of this. I could have sworn it was like Unhooked where it was like an uh, original character goes to Neverland and like falls in love with Peter Pan or something. But this is actually also kind of like Lost Boy where um, James Hook joins Peter Pan in Neverland and he gets stuck there. Uh, so that actually sounds wicked cool. Maybe I'll pick this up sooner than I thought. Okay, this is, that's what happens when you don't read the backs of things. And then I also have Alias Hook by Lisa Jensen. This is a library copy. I still need to make it into not a library copy. Um, but this is an adult Peter Pan retelling, which I'm so excited about. Um, I believe it's about a original character. Yeah, this is a original character and she goes to Neverland and makes Hook kind of want to grow up and leave Neverland. I like... Like, I can't decide whether I like um, the kind of focus on Captain Hook in a lot of these stories, but I guess it's fine. <laughs> and my last one is the one that came in the mail today, and I honestly can't even tell you. I picked this up completely on one person's recommendation. You know who you are. You commented on my video, and I immediately went out and bought it because I found it for like $2 or whatever. I don't know what I was expecting, but definitely wasn't this book. And that is The Child Thief by Brahm. Okay, obviously, I looked through all of the different Peter Pan retellings lists and stuff and kept seeing this, but I don't know, the, the cover didn't necessarily draw me in. Um, I'm so happy I got this because I cannot wait to read this. First off, it's huge. Here's a normal paperback. It's massive. Like, holy crap. It's huge. And also, this has full, huge, gorgeous, full-page illustrations. Let me find some full page illustration as well as in the middle we have colored illustrations of some of the characters and this definitely is very adult um very adult 
uh, retelling of Peter Pan and I'm so excited to get to this now. I was like, I just, I was not expecting this at all. This is massive. Um, but I read the author's note and it seems like Brahm is very much like me when it comes to Peter Pan and the characterization. So I'm really excited to read this. Um, but yes, oh my god. This might be my next read, I'm not gonna lie. So those are the books um, about Peter Pan that I have read and plan to read, but now I want to talk about just Peter Pan in general. So like I said, characterization of Peter Pan. I feel like I'm one of the few people who really... I fell in love with the character of Peter. Like I feel like a lot of people kind of like fall in love with Peter Pan. But I think I fell in love with his character a little bit differently than most people. A lot of people I see online talking about Peter Pan. It's very much more about this like romanticized fantastical thought of never growing up. And they're more interested in that element of the story in Peter than like other things. I fell in love with Peter Pan in J.M. Barrie's original novel. I liked Peter Pan in Austin Chance's novel obviously but I really fell in love with him in J.M. Barrie's like canon work because I realized what kind of character he was supposed to be. I don't really understand why there seems to be two characterizations of Peter Pan. There is the Peter Pan who is so overly romanticized and there's the Peter Pan who's so overly evil. And I don't know why these two became like the go-to characterizations for Peter Pan. So like I was saying, in Lost Boy, I liked her characterization the best because she seemed to kind of nail it on the head of what I thought Peter Pan is like. While in like Tiger Lily, I found him very over romanticized and very like, like there were obviously a couple of little spots where he was like, you know, evil or something, but not really. He was very over, overly cutesy and nice and romantic and there was lots of kissing and it was kind of weird, but like, but like, I don't have the actual book, so I'm just going to hold up Never Never. Um, in Unhooked by Lisa Maxwell, he was so overly evil and I was just like, we need a middle, we need a, we need a middle ground. Because I fell in love with Peter Pan because I loved how J.M. Barry portrayed just a normal 11 year old boy. I feel like in books, younger kids, like preteen kids, are shown in two lights. They're either shown way older, like you'll get a character who's 12 years old and is speaking and acting like a 16 year old and it's like, yeah, okay, sure, um, like research your 12 year olds before you write one. Or there are the 11 year olds who are really, really childish and like, I don't know, I think the, my, my one that's going off in my head is actually Cassandra Clare's recent works of the, the Lady Midnight books. There's a character who's eight who I keep reading and I think he's like two or three years old and there's a girl who I think is 11 or 12 who I always read as like way younger than she is because they're always just so like they're always asleep they don't do much they don't do anything nothing happens and I'm like there seems to be two extremes where the author either makes an 11 or 12 year old wicked old or wicked young. J.M. Barry seemed to capture perfectly in Peter Pan what an 11 year old boy is and I loved it. If you guys didn't know, I worked at a summer camp for a very long time, many years. Um, for half of my time, I worked with kids who had mental disabilities like autism or Down syndrome, and my other time was spent with the 11 and 12 year old boys. I was put in this group to work with at this camp because I knew how to handle them really well and um, they liked me, so I was their counselor for quite a while. And J.M. Barry and Christina Henry really captured what an 11 year old boy is. Um, they're not evil. They're not these evil little creatures who are there to like piss you off even though they do a lot. They're just kids. They're really simple creatures and I feel like that's the best way to describe Peter Pan is he's just a simple creature. When, when he wants something, he wants it. If he wants something, he gets it. Like, there's no in between. And I love that about Peter Pan. I feel like a lot of people look at him and like romanticize the fact that he's like, he's kind of like this. But I'm like, that's just any like 11, 12, 13 year old boy. If they want something, they want it. And if they want it, why shouldn't they get it kind of thing. So that's kind of my experience with Peter Pan is I'm honestly just like looking for the perfect Peter Pan retelling in 
showing that perfect Peter Pan that J.M. Barry had, um, which is why I'm so excited to read more of his actual works about Peter Pan. And I'm just excited to read so many more because I just, I want that, that character that I love so much to appear again kind of thing. But also I just, I want to just throw this out there that it's really freaking creepy how much people romanticize Peter Pan. I feel like not even just like the romanticized as in like actually like romanticizing him into like in like into a love interest like in Tiger Lily like he kisses people and stuff like that in this book not even that sense I just I was like looking through the internet for you know some something cute to hang on my wall I got a new house and I wanted like something Peter Pan really to hang up on the wall the just how romanticized him and his story is it's creepy it's creepy to be like a, an adult person and like romanticizing Peter Pan because like when I say I'm in love with the character of Peter Pan I'm not saying like I'm in love with Peter Pan he's 11 please remember he's an 11 year old boy I'm saying I like his character and I really like what he stands for and I like that about him but some people seem to actually be in love with Peter Pan and I think that's a little weird just saying guys he's 11 do I need to make that any clearer he's 11 please don't please don't romanticize him don't sexualize him I've seen so many of that too, like the over over romanticizing into sexualizing. I'm like, guys, he's 11. Please get that through your heads. But anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I might make another one all about Peter Pan after I read more books about Peter Pan. So stay tuned. But yeah, I mean, so many people always comment on my videos saying that they love Peter Pan too. So I hope you guys um, all enjoyed this video and definitely talk to me down in the comments below with any of your ideas about Peter Pan or any topics I talked about. And I love you all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!